In the early 1700s, it was said that beaver dams could be seen every 20 yards along some rivers. The first important thing to realize is just how incredibly abundant these animals were historically, right? We don't know exactly how many beavers lived in North America, uh, but the best guess we have is that there are as many as 400 million beavers uh, on this continent, you know, making ponds and, and wetlands. That many beavers with that many uh, beaver dams essentially produce a much more humid, more well-watered landscape. We know from reading trappers' journals and explorers' diaries and, you know, Native American uh, histories, you know, we know that these animals created an incredibly lush, green, blue, wet landscape, right? All of those dams that they would have built would have created ponds and wetlands, you know, hundreds of millions of acres uh, of, of open water uh, all over North America. Early beaver trappers said that the rivers were silver with fish. This is the environment that salmon evolved in, learning to jump over beaver dams to reach their preferred spawning habitat. It's been said that beavers taught salmon how to jump. Today there are maybe 10 to 15 million, right? So they're not an endangered species. Um, you know, they're not, going to go to, they're not going to go extinct anytime soon, but they're still you know, a tiny fraction uh, of their historic abundance. By 1850, the European fur trade had killed so many beavers, they had become rare or completely vanished in much of North America. Without beavers to maintain their dams, their ponds drained and the rivers streamlined towards their outflow. When we killed 400 million beavers, you know, we profoundly changed the landscape in ways that I think we don't fully recognize, right? When all of those beaver ponds drained and those wetlands emptied, you know, and those streams went from being these kind of big, messy, chaotic, uh, sort of braided systems into just kind of single thread straight channels. You know, that's, I think we, we internalized that as being normal and natural. Uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of resource managers and, and even a lot of biologists um, have, you know, have kind of internalized this notion of a, a healthy stream as being this, you know, kind of free flowing, fast moving, you know, single thread gravel bottomed uh, thing that you would, you know, see in a fly fishing magazine or something. A river confined to its banks, flowing unobstructed, may seem like a natural sight, but it's only because our time on Earth is too short to remember how the natural world looked before the fur trade. We set out to film beavers and understand their role in creating habitat. By placing motion-activated cameras in areas where we think we'll see beavers, we can get video without disturbing the environment. The cameras stay active for weeks. We place them in the summer and then pick them up once the water freezes, making travel through the swamp easier. The cameras keep coming back without evidence of beaver. We reset them in increasingly remote areas. I'm surprised at how difficult beavers are to find. Yeah, because they, they get killed when they're near people. You know, I think that uh, there, any, I mean, any beaver dam by the side of the road is gonna be very conspicuous for a, a, for a trapper. And, you know, they also get killed near people because they cause conflicts with human property, right? They, you know, they dam in, in road culverts and flood the road. They cut down people's trees. They, you know, flood people's driveways. Uh, and, you know, tens of thousands of beavers are killed all over the country every year, um, you know, for basically doing what beavers do. What we don't really recognize in modern times is how drastically different the world was then. And I think it's part of human nature to sort of, you know, look around you at the world and think, well, you know, this is completely normal. Everything has been just the way it is forever. Parks like Belle Isle in Detroit remove beaver if they start returning the park to its natural state of wilderness. A representative from Michigan's Department of Natural Resources said, aside from eating the willow trees, beavers are causing some flooding in the park's wooded areas. You know, when we kill beavers uh, and eliminated beavers virtually from this continent, you know, we just changed the landscape without really realizing it. Uh, and, you know, and, and, and now when, when beavers move into an area and change it back, you know, we interpret that as being unnatural when a thousand years ago, you know, those beaver created systems would have been uh, prevalent all over the place. In the middle of the Detroit River is a shipwreck graveyard. Once the base for a massive industrial project that transformed the Detroit River and Great Lakes shipping traffic. This heavily industrialized area seems like an unlikely place for wildlife. We've got these camera traps. It looks like there's some fresh beaver tracks in the snow here. So they definitely walk by. Leaving the cameras out for a week pays off. 
Not only did they capture video of beaver, but lots of other wildlife as well. In this environment of crumpled steel and tangled cables, wildlife is abundant. A beaver has built its home on this half-sunken boat. If left alone, nature can thrive, even in areas of human waste and destruction. Humans evolved in nature, and now nature is evolving in a human-made environment. Colleges like Aldo Leopold, for example, another good Midwesterner, by the way, who tends to, as Leopold looks at what we're doing in America, one of the things he realizes is that we are unthinkingly transplanting the European or old world model to a brand new continent in North America. And that model, as he argues, is not actually a scientific model. It's just kind of based on these old folk traditions that have come down as wisdom over the ages. And at one point in his career, by the late 1930s, and he did this up until his death right before 1950, Leopold began to argue for an American approach, a different approach to the world, because we, after all, not only had a brand new continent to exist in, but we had instituted a, a public lands system in the United States that was different from anything that any European country had. And in Europe, without public lands, people had long ago wiped out bears and wolves and almost all large creatures, so that there were just nothing usually but birds and small mammals that were left. But in America, we had the opportunity to do something different. And to me, that's the thing we're still struggling with. We still have this kind of first contact mentality about America that's existed now for hundreds of years where we're thinking that what we're going to do is just remake it into England or France or Germany when in fact we have an opportunity to do something completely different and it involves coexisting with the wildlife that's been here uh, far, far longer than we have. So it's been a struggle. It's something that we, we still tend to, including those resource agencies you mentioned, are still kind of grappling with how to do and also how to convince the public that this is what one does, that you don't just try to institute civilization, which wipes out nature altogether, but you try to figure out a way to live with this is Coulter from The Wild Where You Are. If you like this video, it would really help if you click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.